Dear Lord M, it's time for you to return to the palace. Lord Melbourne, as anyone who saw season one would know, has gone back to Brockett Hall. However, Victoria, happily married though she is, now has new problems, the problems of being you know, a married woman. And there's something kind of pleasantly simplified about Victoria and Melbourne's relationship now, because he can really be more of that uncomplicated advisor, father figure and friend. You're the sovereign, ma'am. Whatever trials you may endure, nothing will ever change that. But it was complicated by all sorts of other kind of conflicting, um, confused feelings on her part, a little on his part, but he was, he was a good custodian of those feelings. You know, he, he could watch his feelings with a kind of wry amusement, but no, not. It was never, I believe, to be acted on. But Melbourne's very good for advice because he's been through it. You know, he may have made a lot of mistakes, but you know, someone who's made a lot of mistakes can be quite um, wise. So she comes to him, she has nowhere else to turn. And you know, the wonderful thing about Melbourne for her is that he, he has no skin in the game. There's nothing that he wants from it. I've missed you, Lord M. You always know how to make me feel better. Well, I'm glad to hear it. Not only is he on Victoria's side, but he's actually on Albert's side too. So when she comes to say, oh, he's doing this and he's doing that, he's able to say, well, don't be so hard on him. You know, anyone in that position, it's, it's understandable. You know, he may be in the wrong, but I can see why. So it was nice for me to have the opportunity to show Melbourne's true attitude towards Albert, because I didn't get, and that always was his attitude, but I didn't get many opportunities to show it before. I always was slightly sorry me and Albert didn't get more moments together where I could show that it was all cool.